one is the pencil spin. It can be a great conditioning exercise, working on engaging that core, controlling the spin of the pole also can be the great beginning to a climb, to a pole pass, and this eventually builds to having that control for figure eights and other things like this. So we have three different versions here. We have level one, where you start with, as that one starts to get comfortable, you move to level two, as that one gets comfortable, you move on to level three, just like all things in pole. Just when you think you started to get it figured out, there's something harder to do, right? Okay, so for this one, for level one, you're gonna use your form, okay? By using your form, it helps you keep the distance between you and the pole. The goal with this first pencil spin in finding this position is to not have anything touching the pole but your arms. Basically, you're able to engage your core despite that centripetal force and not melt into the pole, okay? But in the beginning, as our brain and our body are kind of walking or working their way, wrapping around that, we're gonna use our forearm to help us find that distance. So the forearm position is very similar to what you would do in a forearm climb, okay? Elbows to one side, hand is to the other. We're pushing with that forearm, okay? You wanna make sure that forearm isn't too low because then you're gonna collapse or too high, because that takes away your mechanical advantage, you're gonna have to work really hard for it. So think like somewhere between shoulder, nipple-ish level in there. It's gonna vary a little bit by every person based on length of your torso, length of your arms, all those things, okay? The second hand is gonna go above, but how high up is really gonna be personal preference, okay? Some of you may prefer to grab directly above it, which means this bicep's gonna have to be a lot more engaged throughout all of it, but you might feel like you have more control. Some of you might prefer to reach up a little bit higher. That being said, if you do find that you prefer to reach up higher, make sure you don't reach so high that it causes your body to tilt because then it's gonna to start to make everything get all cattywampus, okay? So if you are reaching that arm up, try to keep your chest relatively even. It's not gonna be perfectly even, right? So here's our level one. Um, in the beginning with this, you don't need to be high off the ground. These are very, very hard, okay? You're basically gonna hold a sustained pull up as you're spinning around trying to resist and triple to force, okay? So I like to start up on my tiptoes as I step into it because if I start flat footed, I'm so low that it's hard to get my feet off the ground without bending my knees. And then once you bend your knees, that kind of takes away from all that core engagement that we work so hard for. Okay, so I like to start on my tiptoes. I'm gonna step into it with my inside foot as my outside leg comes around, my arm goes into place. In the beginning, you can have your legs out or together, okay? And when we're using that form, because we're trying to get that form kind of the center of our body, you're gonna feel you're not exactly centered to the pole, you're slightly turned out, okay? Just mechanics of our body, right? Or I should say proportions. So this is the level one. Should your toes be pointed? Should your toes be flexed? Personal preference, priorities are getting your arm position and this core position. Because the goal is to not touch the pole. Pretend the pole is hot lava, okay? In the beginning with this move, for a lot of you, it's gonna be wrapping your brain around it. It's not a strength thing. It's just finding your brain. It's like a new baby learning how to walk. Well, new babies don't walk when babies do start to walk, is your brain has to wrap around the balance of what you have to engage. So in the beginning, you're probably gonna find yourself doing this and starting and going and kind of flopping out of it. Fight to hold this position. When these are new to you, hold it as long as, like if you go into it and you only go a second or maybe an eighth of a turn, and then you start to get cattywampus, try to pull it back and then come down and start again. It's much easier to find this core engagement if we start from it with it for the beginning versus trying to find it after we've lost it, which is eventually what we do in level three. Okay, so here's level one. Forearm, other arm somewhere above it. Use your forearm to push away and give distance. Eyes, very important. Where your eyes go, your body is gonna follow, okay? So when you are doing this, look directly in front of you or even possibly slightly down. In doing that, quite often that helps this kinetic chain engage and helps us hold this position of like a hollow body, okay? Basically, we're trying to hold a plank while spinning around a pole. Easy, right? Okay, so if these start to make sense in your body and your brain, then we take it to level two. Level two, the forearms come off, okay? So everything is the same. The goal is the same to not touch the pole, to keep that core engagement. But now, instead of having this form to help push away and keep this distance, we found enough control in our body that we don't need the forearm, okay? 
Now, hands definitely need to be closer together. If you reach up here, it's gonna make it so much harder, okay? So hands close together. Also, going into this, which hand goes high, which hand goes low? Personal preference, some of you might find that you're the opposite, so there isn't a right or wrong, but I find it's usually, for most, easiest to, whichever direction you're going, the inside hand starts low, and the outside hand steps above it, okay? So if I'm going with my right hand low, I'm going to go clockwise, other hand grabs above. If I'm going with my left hand low, I'm going to go counterclockwise, step into it, okay? Doesn't mean you can't change it up and go the other way. Once again, the goal is to get this core engagement. If you feel that it works better for you going the other direction, go for it, but I found most polars, that's how it works for them, okay? Okay, legs, we touched on just a smidge in level one together or out, but the goal is to have this. I find as we progress to this level two, on my less fave and fabulous side, I have to kind of take a moment and keep my legs a little bit wider to lock this in before I bring them in just because it's a little bit slower sometimes on our special side, right? Versus on my fave and fabulous side, I can go right to this and squeeze in and everything's just locked in, okay? So your legs can be out, your legs can be together, but what you are looking for is a relatively straight line right here that we're not meh, 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 arch, any of those things, okay? So the level two, elbows are out. Same kind of approach, stepping into it. I like to go up on my tiptoes. How high do you put your hands? I've had students ask this of like, should I grab high and pull up? How do you feel with your pull-ups, right? I can grab as high as I want to as long as I have the strength to pull myself up because you don't want to be spinning around and have your arms down here because it's going to be really hard to find this shape. You want your arms to be bent so you can lock everything in. So if you're going to reach up there, you want to be able to pull up to that, okay? So it just depends. If you want to work for a little bit more, go higher. If these are new to you, make your life a little easier because these are hard enough, okay? So inside hand low, outside hand grabs above it as we step into it locking everything in, looking at the pole right in front of us. Hold, hold, hold. How long are you gonna hold it? Well, until your arms give out, until your core engagement gives out, until your brain is pickled, whatever, okay? So we've got level one using the form. Level two, elbows open up and are no longer helping us keep distance. Level three, we're gonna up the ante. Okay, so level three now, you are going to do a pull-up, one of the slowest pull-ups you've ever done in your life, but it looks cool, right? That's why we do a lot of things in pull. So you're gonna start with what we did in level two, but then from there, you're going to relax your arms, letting them extend. As your arms relax, your gaze is also gonna change. You're gonna look up, let your head come back, which is gonna make it harder to engage this. We're going to let this disengage, let it arch to your heart's content, even if your belly comes and touches the pole, we get to this position. Basically, we lose that plank position. Then from there, our goal is to pull back up and re-engage and find that plank position, despite the centripetal force that's pulling on us and despite the fact that our arms might be burning and tired. Okay? So, like I said in, when we were working on level one, where I said, you know, if you start to get cattywampus, come down, reset, because it's really hard to find it on the move. That's what this is doing, okay? So what this one's gonna look like, you're gonna start just like you did for level two, except for only thing I would add is you are gonna wanna grab higher because remember, we wanna be able to extend our arms down and if you start too low, you don't really have anywhere to extend without dragging on the ground, okay? So, and you can jump into this. If you wanna add a little hopsy into it, I mean, I can only go so high without hitting my head on the ceiling here, but if you want to jump into it, nothing wrong with that, okay? So you're gonna start the same as we did in level one, find your plank, then lose your plank, then find your plank, then lose your plank, then find your plank until your arms are burning. Okay, so that would be the level three. Okay, so we have a lot of things going on there. You have your arms working, doing a pull-up, not easy. We have a gaze shift, which changes your core engagement, okay? And then we also have this disengagement of the core here, losing it and then finding it. But at the same time, when we are losing it, we're only losing it in this direction, right? We only came right out as if we're still hiding behind the pole. We don't end up going here or here. So we are still keeping our side to side core engagement. We're just letting ourselves purposely disengage some of the front to back core engagement. 
So there are a lot of things going on. Okay, so we have three different levels of the spinning pole pencil exercise. As I said at the beginning, these are great for conditioning. These eventually build to a lot of other moves, inverts, climbs, things like that. It's also a really good practice in learning how to control your body to spin pull. Okay, those of you that maybe are newer to spin pull or getting used to spin pull, this is a great one to learn how to start harnessing the centripetal force and how to give your brain and your body time to adjust to it. If you are working on these and you're getting frustrated because your body keeps going cattywampus, just keep revisiting them. Okay, some people these come a little bit faster. For most people I found, for most pullers, if they're struggling with these, it's not a strength thing. It's just giving their brain and their body time to make the neuromuscular muscular connection. Basically, we're trying to catch stuff on the fly as centripetal force is trying to throw us off the pole. Sounds like a good time, right? Okay, give these a try, both sides. And of course, keep in mind, your left and your right side, you gotta treat them like different children. Sometimes they are not in the same place in life, okay? And that's okay. Maybe your fav and fabulous side is ready to move on to step two, but your less fav and fabulous side is still working on one, and that's okay. Don't move to the next step unless the one before is solid. That doesn't mean you can't like dip your toes in the water to see how the water feels, but if you haven't mastered the first one, going to the second one is not gonna happen. It's not gonna make it easier, okay? So really spend some time honing in on one and the more solid your foundations are on the first one, the more solid you're gonna be in the second one. Same going from the second one to the third one. All right, try these out, have some fun. Let me know what is your number. Which one are you doing on which side? Is it the same on your left and right? Is one side more comfortable than the other? Let's hear the deets. <laughs> 